Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to be creating an art journal page using some of the supplies from the Mix Me Inspired box for March 2021. So I'm working in the Dina Weekly Media journal on a page that's already been gessoed and I applied the gesso very roughly so that I'd have some areas that had full gesso coverage and some that did not and you can start to see that as I stencil with the archival ink and a mini blending tool through a stencil that the darker areas are where there is no gesso and the lighter areas are where the gesso is there and the ink isn't able to soak into the raw paper. So this is going to give me a very awesome tone on tone look and create a lot of variation within my background. So I'm going to continue with the stencil all the way over the page covering everything until I have the entire page filled with flowers. And because I'm using an archival ink, these flowers will dry permanent and will not move for any of our future steps, which is important because now I'm going to go in with a Nouveau glitter marker, and this is a water-based glitter marker, so I can go in with a wet brush and move that color around, and it will move because it's water-based, and it's also done on gesso. Now again, noting that the areas that don't have perfect gesso coverage, the marker is going to soak in completely and not be able to be moved. Where on the gesso areas, it's going to be able to completely wash out like a watercolor or a water-based paint. So this is going to, once again, give me a lot of variation and interest within my background. And I will do these exact same steps on every petal on the, of the flowers until they are all completely colored in. And the color I'm using here is a fired brick in the Nouveau glitter marker. So I'm also sometimes, because I want to have a lot of color variation, not always applying fresh marker before I go into color another petals. So as you can see, I've colored two petals with the marker and I've used the transfer of the extra to do that third petal. And I'm going to, once again, as I said, do that until they're all filled in. Now I'm going in with a paintbrush and some paint and you can see I've mixed uh, the original green paint with a bunch of white until I get it, several colors of that green and I'm going to just paint a bunch of leaves. Now I am just putting these leaves on any old place, anywhere I think there's an open area that would look good with a leaf, I'm going to just place one and I'm going to keep doing that until I think that it is filled in and I like how it looks. There is no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting this, it's completely at my own discretion. And after I have the base layer of every leaf, I'm going to go back in with the lighter colors to start adding highlights. And I'm going to work from dark to light and keep doing this until I have all of the colors of greens that I have mixed up applied to the leaf. I also on a few of them go back and add a little bit of the darker color if they got too light. And I'll just keep doing this back and forth until I'm happy with how the final product of the leaves are. And my goal here is to create a very loose, unstructured sort of floral background. So I'm not really worried too much about where the shadowing is going or how I'm doing this. It's just all very intuitive and I'm working very quickly to place the colors of green down onto the leaves. And to make the center of the flowers, I'm using a wet brush and a Dina Wickley Media Scribble Stick in the color Cheddar. And I'm taking the wet brush and applying it directly onto the scribble stick and then taking that and putting it down onto the page to fill in the center of the flowers. And this is a way that you can control how much color you're placing down with that wet brush. The wetter the brush is, the lighter the color will be. So now I'm going in and with a brush that doesn't have as much water, isn't as wet, I am now putting down some color to add shadowing within the yellow circles that I've created. And this is going to dry to become a very loose watercolored inspired center of the flower that kind of mimics the rest of the look of the flowers that I've done on the page. And then I'm also going to go in with a scribble stick in the color mineral to add some blue shadowing around all my flowers and fill in some of that white area in between each of the flowers. And then I'm going to let this dry completely. So this butterfly cutout is actually a scrap or a piece of trash from another project that I made and I liked how it looked so I saved it. And I'm going to link to that video here so that you can see how this was actually made. But like I said, this was the leftover piece and now I'm just going in with some paints in sand, buff, and umber. And with a baby wipe I'm applying them onto the paper just to take away that stark 
black and white look and make it be a little bit more vintagey. And so I'm using a baby wipe to apply this so that it's not a complete 100% coverage. I'm wanting to not lose that background that is on the page. And then I'm also going to use my finger and a little bit of water to also blend that out. And I'm going to just keep doing this until I'm happy with the result. And I let that dry for just a little bit before I went in with this darker brown because if you keep applying color, you'll end up blending it. But I wanted to have this really deep dark brown on the edges and so you must dry your layers to continue layering. So now I'm just going in with my finger around the outside and making sure that the edges are that really deep dark brown and then blending it out and softening it to towards the center so that it, you don't have it be quite as dark as the edge. And so after I let this dry 100%, I can glue it down onto my page. So I'm using Distress Collage Medium and a brush just to put it over the entire back of that butterfly paper. And then I'm going to place it down on my page. And so now I had a distinct line between where the paper and the background was. So I'm using a palette knife and some black gesso to remove that edge by dragging black gesso down from the edge of the paper and then also dragging it up into it. So it looks like the background is behind this grungy black brown butterfly layer. And this is going to help... Uh, bring those two elements together and help them to relate to each other instead of them being just a piece of paper stuck down onto the top of that butterfly background. And I'm going to do that same thing along the top once again making sure not to create a perfect line I'm wanting there to be some paint going up and some paint coming down onto the butterfly paper to give it a very loose, grungy look uh, and not create a perfect line. And after the black gesso has had a chance to dry, I can write in my quote with a white Posca pen. And this I'm writing, live wide. And then I'm also going to put down a piece of ephemera that says explore and I just used uh, my rub it scrub it pad and a tool to put a little hole so that that gold brad can go through it and now I wanted to add some shadowing within my butterfly so I'm going to go in with a watercolor pencil and a wet brush and along every edge on the left side of every edge on this butterfly I'm going to put down black and that is going to give some shadow and dimension to my butterfly. And I'm making sure it'll be consistent. So in this case, I'm putting it along every left edge and I'm leaving the right alone. And that's going to help uh, make this shadow consistent throughout the entire design. And then I'm also blending it out with my finger. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to glue down the Explore piece of paper, uh, die cut ephemera that we used um, that gold brad on earlier. I'm going to stick that down. And 
I'm also going to use a little piece of square ephemera that says 9 and 3 fourths and it's printed in gold foil so I thought that added a nice little sparkle and blended in nicely with the sparkle from the glitter marker that's used on the flowers. And now that everything is 100% dry, I'm going back in with that glitter marker and just adding some dots over the top of everything to bring it together and also incorporate some of that sparkle from the background. And so I'm just going to keep putting them around until I'm happy with it. There's not a right or wrong a number of uh, dots to add. It's totally up to you and what you think looks good. And with that, our page is complete. Thank you so much for watching, and I'd love to see what you're creating, so be sure to share with us on social media using hashtag ArtJournalJunction. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our future art journaling videos and mixed media projects. Have a wonderful day.